I write cause they can't miss All about the game, that's a cold swish Serving up the truth, call it ruthless Tune in and get your fix from Blake and Vish Sports This is a guy we've talked about a lot here on Blake and Vish Sports Because one of us here, <clears throat> me, is a huge fan of this guy And I thought he showed out So without further ado Blake, how good did Matthew Stafford look in his I mean, Rams debut? The fact that the first drive, he just delivers an absolute strike to Van Jefferson. And then, of course, funnily enough, the two veteran safeties of the Bears don't touch many scores. Beside the point, he looked awesome, though. You see the arm. You see what it's like when he has not even – for whatever reason, this man will never have a good running game, but – they didn't run particularly well at the beginning or efficiently wise. But until late, yeah. Yeah, until until they were just on the field for just seemed like nonstop. Um, it's nice seeing him with McVay and then having just a slew of good receiving options in Cup and Woods. And, I mean, I just think that – I mean, you, you, you more so fact have just pointed it out. Like, him with this offensive-minded team and just head coach is going to be lethal – I thought his arm was just the biggest thing. Like he just looked like he could put that ball anywhere he wanted to. And overall, this offense is going to be scary. And the thing is too, their defense is good too. So it's not like they're, you know, asking him to do what he did on the lines and asking him to score, you know, over 30 a game. That's not a requirement anymore. If you do, it's good. But if you don't, you know, we we can still win without that. So I, I'm really interested to see how this season plays out for them. I know me. Both me and you had them as a top three seed in the NFC. Um, and it's it's going to be a bloodbath in the NFC West, but having Stafford will kind of help with that. So I'll touch on this real quick. It's a very similar concept to the one Trey Lance ran and through the trench mm. field and Greg Papa's from Trey area. But um, it, it's a very similar concept. But um, yeah, Matthew Stafford, first of all, that was an absolute frozen rope to Van Jefferson. I mean, I, I don't even, the ball was just, it's it's a big right time over he just flips his hips yeah. and just nails that thing and van jefferson who you and i have talked about being an impact player for the rams in prior streams especially very early into the draft process and off season before tutu atwell and deshaun jackson were drafted and signed we talked about him and he looked really good but matthew stafford looked like what i expected matthew stafford to be he's the two things that separate matthew stafford to me is that his arm, obviously, I've talked about it. It is a generational arm, like in terms of the strength and accuracy. He's got an arm that can be compared to Rodgers, Mahomes, Allen. He's mm -hmm. one of the few guys that has that type of arm. And then the other thing is his pocket movement. His pocket movement is actually incredible. The Bears' defensive line did not have a bad game by any means. And it's not like the Rams' offensive line is fantastic. Khalil Mack actually was generating pressure. But Stafford's ability to move his feet, keep his eyes down the field, and navigate mm -hmm. the pocket, I, it was – I thought him and Dak Prescott moved the best in the pocket of every quarterback I saw personally this weekend. Mm -hmm. I thought Dak Prescott on Thursday and Matthew Stafford on Sunday. That was the two best. It was absolutely unbelievable. And the thing I really wanted to touch on is I didn't think their offense looked like a Jared Goff, uh, Sean McVay offense. A Jared Goff, Sean McVay offense is very gimmicky to me. The sustainable thing about their offense is the run game. It's built on the outside zone. They have a few trap plays. They have things they can build off of it. But the other parts of that offense is the passing element of that offense is a ton of bootlegs, a ton of heavy play action. And they get you by once they get first downs, they start going fast. They start going with pace. Yesterday, the Rams were never really able to get pace into that game. They didn't really – they ran like two bootlegs with Stafford. They ran play action, but there was a lot of drop back, just a lot of standard play action off of, you know, uh, just a normal look. It wasn't off the wide, selling the wide zone and bring, moving the quarterback and moving the pocket and moving the launch point and all that. And Stafford was just ripping it. He was throwing unbelievably – he is so good, and I think people are going to see it. His decision-making is so good. I mean, the touchdown to Cup, people thought it was a busted coverage. I was seeing Dan Orlovsky talk about it, and I, and I saw somebody else break it down earlier. He basically moved the second safety and created the open space for Cup. He wanted Cup mm. the whole time. He manipulated the safety, made him bite on the underneath route, and just threw it right behind it. 
it was it looked like something that can be sustainable because they have a bread and butter to their offense. And what are you going to do to stop Matthew Stafford throwing like that to those receivers? Their defense looked good. Uh, I thought happy. Matt. I I love Matthew Stafford. I thought he was going to look unbelievable. He looked better than what I even expected. Mm. And that's pretty hard because your standards for him are higher than most. So he must have really impressed you then. He looked like a top five quarterback in the league. Yeah, that was great. I mean, I thought too, just like just the weapons they have there too. It's like the play to Cooper Cup where it was short pass. It was third and long. The dude breaks like three tackles and gets a first down. You add that onto the fact that Stafford can just go anywhere with the ball, and it, it starts getting really challenging to stop that offense. They didn't even need to run the ball well to score. What did they score? Like thirty-five points. Imagine when they are yeah. playing a team that doesn't have Akeem Hicks down there, and they're able to run the ball, and then off of that, just also have Stafford just dropping bombs to Van Jefferson and then Cooper Cup as well. Like it, this offense is limitless with how with how uh, how it's going to be able to score this year. I think, and I think that one of the things that always used to confuse me is the difference between arm talent and arm strength. I think that, you know, when we're talking arm strength, you know, even a guy like Trey Lance has arm that's as strong as, like, you know, a Matthew Stafford. But you see just Stafford's natural ability to just be able to throw short, throw long, control the pace on the ball and all of that, and even make the big time, you know, like 100 mile an hour throws over the middle, but then be able to throw check downs and stuff like that and take pace off the ball and throw layered balls over the middle, throw the ball with excess touch and all of that. And that's where I think there's the big difference because I think there's a lot of people in NFL history also with really, really strong arms, but they don't have this raw throwing ability that Stafford has in terms of being able to throw every type of ball, every arm angle off every platform. Mm -hmm. I mean, Lance is just one example because he doesn't have that yet. He could have that next year or whenever. But, oh, Matthew Stafford, man, Matthew Stafford. Definitely. And I thought just like from the broadcast, listening to it, like Al Michaels and Chris Collinsworth, Chris Collinsworth, we're just saying like how happy Sean McVay is and like, oh, now he has Matt Stafford. It's over. But I, I, I really don't feel like the national, like people in the national media have been bringing it up like they were because they were talking very nonchalant about how much of it, how truly how much of an upgrade this was. And I almost felt bad for Goff. Like they were just rubbing it in his face how much better Stafford was than him. <laughs> I just yeah. thought that was like kind of weird. Like, like, geez, like, chill out. Like, I, like, you don't need, he was just catching strays for no reason. Yeah. You know, it's funny because the first three and a half, like, golf is final stats against the 49ers 38 for 57, 300 something yards, three touchdowns. It all looks good and dandy. But the first three and a half quarters of that game, I just was thinking, wow, Jared Goff, like, I know exactly why. <laughs> the Rams traded you. You do not react well under pressure. You don't make good decisions under pressure. Like there's just so many things wrong with you, Jared Goff. And I, I mean, he's not bad, but he's just not Matthew Stafford. He's not even. I thought, you know, I thought it was pretty apparent. I thought Jimmy G looked significantly better than Goff, and it wasn't just the system or whatever. Like Jared Goff just cannot react with people within his throwing area. Like. Like anywhere near anybody, anywhere near him, and bad things happen for the Lions with Jared Goff. So uh, I think I don't want to rip on Goff more because Alan Michaels and Collinsworth did it enough. But Rams fans enough. should be happy that they got Matthew Stafford. I think they already are. 